When I got this car, I thought it was fast. But under the hood, all I had was this intercooler that was heat soaking and this turbo that was running out of breath. So the 80s are over, we're in 2023. Now, Kyle has this big V mount, a big single turbo, and a custom mounted radiator. If you wanna see how we did all this, don't go anywhere and stay tuned for more. Hi everybody, welcome back to Vibrant Performance TV. My name is Kyle, this is Tanner from Goki's Garage. Hey, how's it going everybody? Today is gonna to be a big day. We're starting the V-mount system on the car. Uh, Tanner knocked it out of the park with the turbo manifold. I'm super stoked on that. Um, we'll see what he could do with the V-mount system, I guess. Yeah, luckily Kyle was nice enough to procure all these amazing Vibrant parts. The best one is their intercooler core that we're gonna be using. That'll help cool all the air from the turbo. Then we'll be using the new pre-made, pre-bent sheet metal end tanks. That way you can just put them, align them together and then blast them with some nice welds and then you're done. All we gotta do after we weld them though, we gotta put the hole in there for the, for the charge tubing, but that's no big deal. Yeah. Um... We've also got an assortment of aluminum bends going on here, uh, 180s, uh, a few different other degrees, uh, even some nice tight radius stuff that we're probably gonna need uh, near the throttle body. Cast elbow, that's gonna be really nice to make a tight radius bend off of the turbo. Yep, and then we also have the HD clamp with the transition to go straight from the turbo on the cast 90 into a two and a half, so that way, we can keep the system flowing as good as we can. And all the HD clamps come with the O-rings to seal from low boost to high boost. So never have to worry about leaks with the HD clamps ever again. But you're probably wondering, well, how do I install these things? Well, Vibrant has the HD alignment clamp. They're real simple. They just pop right in there. They keep the alignment between them. They set the gap. That way you get maximal axial play. So that way you can still allow your pipe to move a little bit but keeping everything sealed. So, pretty cool. Yeah, and um, we actually even have some of Tanner's parts here. Uh, I don't know if you want to touch a little bit on... Yeah, so I brought a couple of goodies. Um, these are some of my standoff weld bungs that I will place on various areas, like on top of the intercooler like that. I use my universal mounting tabs a lot to mount radiators, intercoolers, whatever you want, really. Um, they either come with an isolated polyurethane mount or they just have, you know, standard 3 8 holes. We can do other holes, it doesn't matter. But yeah, I brought a couple of goodies, so we'll gonna, uh, you know, get started here and uh, show you guys what we're gonna do. Yeah, stay tuned for this one. Now that the manifold is finished, let's talk about the intercooler and V-mount kit. V-mount kits are great for a number of reasons. They simplify the charge piping. Instead of stacking heat exchangers, they allow for fresh air to cool both cores. This diffuser effect also slows down the ambient flow increases pressure and improves cooling efficiency. And of course we're putting it all together with a Vibrant intercooler with pre-cut sheet metal end tanks and we're also using Vibrant's all new quick release pinless HD clamps. Let's get to it. So to start off our V-mount project we have to figure out a way to, in order to support the radiator and the intercooler at the same time. So what we've done is we've actually removed some of the OEM bracketry and we fabricated this bolt-in bar that has sandwich plates through the frame rail in order to support all the weight of the intercooler and the radiator. Now, we're gonna be using this later on too to support other things in the process, but for right now, that's gonna be our main focus. So here's the intercooler core that we're gonna be using. As you can see, it fits in there perfectly between the radiator support and the bar that we just tacked in there. So keep watching and you're gonna see some fun stuff. That's all I got. That's <laughs> So we just pulled the bar out of the car and luckily Vibrant has this awesome table that has standard spacing. So we're able to actually bolt this down. So for those of you that are able to design brackets in CAD, it's a really good idea if you have a table like this to coordinate your brackets to actually coincide with something like this. That way this whole table will act as a heat sink and hopefully not warp this tube and the plate for Kyle's RX-7. So we'll see what happens. So 
So whenever you're doing tube work that you're gonna cap both ends, what happens is that the pressure inside will build up. So you drill this little tiny relief hole, that way the gases can escape because when you're gonna weld, as you get to the end of that weld, it'll actually blow out the end of your bead, which kind of ruins your day. Like I've had to ruin Kyle's a lot. I'm kidding. <laughs>
So we're gonna be using these vibrant prefabbed end tanks. These are great when you're in a pinch like me and you gotta fix it. These things allow you to quickly and easily form them together because all you gotta do is line them up and then they pop right together. That's it. So you blast the tacks and then you can just weld them right out, pop them right onto your intercooler, weld that, and then you're done. Now granted, everyone's configuration is gonna be a little bit different, but because they're blank, you can do whatever you want. You can do you know, the side, you can do a backdoor style, you can do an elliptical where you kind of French it in there a little bit, whatever you wanna do. They make it easy, they make it clean, they make it simple. All right guys, check this out and let's tack this one together. It's as easy as that. As a fabricator, that tack is nice and small so I can run my bead right over it, won't even know it's ever there. Well, that out really good. I'm really happy with that. Let's uh, keep going. So the best way to get that consistency is practice. Hours and hours and hours of practice. I've probably welded, you know, 10,000 hours worth of aluminum. So that's kind of what you get. Now that we got these end tanks all welded up, it's gonna be time to blast them onto the core. Check it out. All right, so we got the intercooler all welded out. It's blazing hot still, so we're gonna let it cool down. While it's cooling down, we're gonna go work on the radiator mounts that we had Kyle cut. So let's see how we did. So we got the radiator mounted. We used some of my universal tabs with some polyurethane bushings, as you can see on each side. This isolates the radiator, allows it to expand, and also keeps electrolysis at bay, which for a street car like what we're building for Kyle, we have to consider. So next up, we're gonna pull this thing off and we're gonna finish welding all the mounts up and really make sure it's 100%. The intercooler is in. We got it mounted up. We got the angle set for maximum heat extraction with the new V-mount setup. All we gotta do is modify his hood later on, but Kyle, can, he can take care of that. What we used down below was some more of the universal mounts with the polyurethane bushings to again, allow the intercooler to expand, contract, absorb a little bit of that motion, because it's gonna be a street car. So we don't wanna rigid mount everything. But next up, gotta tackle the charge piping. So the next step in the process is getting our turbo ready to put the HD clamp assembly on there. So what we're gonna use is the Vibrant Casted Short Radius 90. We're gonna weld that to here. We're gonna use our HD clamp and put it right there. This will transition us up to a two and a half inch. That way we can get optimal flow to the intercooler. So now that we got our turbo compressor outlet configuration kind of figured out, we're gonna go ahead and use this HD transition from a two inch HD to a two and a half inch tube to go down to the intercooler. Thank you. 
So we got the hot side charge pipe basically all planned out right here. We got an HD clamp on both sides. We got the transition obviously off the turbo. And then we did a little something. We put a little fish mouth on one of the bends in order to get a little more of a disbursement inside of the intercooler core to optimize the airflow. So it should look pretty cool. All right, so we got the hot side pipe, the first HD ferro all welded up. And then we got the other one right here, just welded that one up. Now we're gonna do the final fitment and any little tiny adjustments we need, we're gonna do right before we weld this last HD ferro. All right, so here we are, it's Friday, it's beer 30, and we're not done. So here's where we're at right now. We got the cold side all tacked up, and we gotta put a blow off valve on this thing because, well, you need one. So we're gonna mount this to the intercooler on the side right here, that way it's nice and sturdy, and also so it doesn't make this pipe wiggle excessively with the weight of the blow off valve. Kyle, how do you feel about all this? Man. Uh, I'm loving it. Um, I watched you do all this, so I saw the attention to detail that he took. Uh, if you like zoom in here, you can see that um, on the inlet and the outlet, he, we have this nice swoop, uh, and it, it, they follow each other perfectly. Same with this this bend uh, on the inlet and the outlet right there. They follow the the profiles very nicely. Uh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm so stoked. Yeah. Uh, I guess the next step is just blasting it all out, right? Yeah. Got to get her done now. All right, Tanner, so we did it. It's done. We did. We yeah. were able to accomplish a lot in a matter of five days. Yeah, that was definitely like the World Olympics. Like, I felt for you. You know, <laughs> you guys gave me a good challenge, but I think with all the right parts and everyone's teamwork here, it's really been made possible. And I couldn't be more grateful for this opportunity. Yeah, no, it, it was definitely a fun time having you out here. Um, yeah. Let's give you guys a, a bit of a recap of everything that we did. Um, so obviously, first we started with the 321 uh, stainless steel manifold uh, made from vibrant 16 gauge. Um, we had a little bit of hurdles there with fitment, so we had to make some changes on the fly. Yep. But I really love the placement. Um, like I had said, it, it came out nice and flat, so now I can just put some studs on and drop the turbo on and it fits nicely. Should be a little easier to get the turbo in there later on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then obviously we jumped into a lot of this V-mount setup. So we have this crossbar that we made um, using a lot of your tabs and stuff. Yeah, use a couple things that I use on, on a lot of builds, but uh, you know, pretty normal. So the cool part is that Vibrant has all the parts necessary to knock all this out of the park. The Cast 90, the HD clamp, the transition, the bends, and then we were able to, you know, fish mouth it in there, lay down a real nice hot weld, got it all smooth and poured it out for the best flow possible. 
Um, obviously, HD clamp everything. Uh, one of my favorite things that Vibrant has is this tight radius bend that allows me to really get in there nice and tight because of all your brake lines that are over here. So that'll really keep everything nice and tight to the engine and should make install a breeze. You can also see that Tanner mounted my blow-off valve here. This is a, a Gretti blow-off valve using a Vibrant flange. Uh, I really like the placement of it. It was kind of getting a little busy over here, so we, we decided to go right at the side of the core. It worked out really great. Yeah, it should sound really good too when, when, once you hit the streets and get that thing boosting, so. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited for it. Um, another cool thing I guess we, we could show is the, the advantages of using HDs. So first off, as you can see, this entire system is like completely floating. So this replaces a, a silicone joint very nicely. You still get plenty of movement and best of all, just like that, it's off. HD, HD, take the tubes off. All right, if you guys have any questions about any of the parts that we used in this build, be sure to hit us up in the comments below and we'll be sure to get back to you. And if you want to check out some more sick projects, badass welding, or anything I'm up to, check me out at Goki's Garage on Instagram. And if you need any fab supplies, check out the website at gokeysgarage.com. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you for coming out, man. Yep. No problem. It's been fun. Yeah. Time to go home. Peace.